Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to talk about Echogenesis by Gary Gibson. And this is one of the books from the self-published science fiction contest. It was the quarter finalist for my team, Book Invasion. I am going to do my best to keep this video non-spoilers. If I decide to talk about something that would be a spoiler, I, I will put a message on the screen. And I'm, I'll try to chapter those, you know, keep all the spoilers in one section if I do that. Catching you up if this is the first time you have heard about this contest. The science fiction self-published contest is a sister kind of thing for a self-published fantasy blog off, which I see a lot of people talk about. Science fiction contest this is the second year that it has been running, and I am a judge, which I'm excited about because I wanted to read more self-published science fiction, as you can see here. Uh, at the beginning of the contest, we, my team read 10 to 20 percent of the roughly 30 books we received and voted yes or no whether we would continue reading. The six that got the highest amount of yeses are the ones that we are reading in full as a team. That doesn't mean that some of us won't go back and read the you know the other ones we really enjoyed. Echogenesis was one that I voted no for. So I decided to start with it to see if I was gonna get bogged down. In the first 10 to 20%, we meet Sam and a motley crew of other assorted people who have just woken up on a strange place. They're, at this point, they don't know that it's a different planet. You know, they're pulling feeding tubes out of their of themselves, opening like these like metal boxes, and all of them are experiencing a, mem a gap of memories. And everyone's body is young. Now there are some members of the expedition who, in their mind, are only a few years older than what their body is. And then there are other ones who are like, no, I'm in my like 80s and now I have a young body. So no one knows what's going on. And they're all trying to figure it out at the same time. And where they are, they're looking at things that are like, it, it looks kind of Earth-like. And their mind is like assigning, like, that's a tree-ish kind of thing. But it's not specific. It's not the type of tree that they know from Earth which is where some of them start going, mm, maybe we're on a different planet, and which is confirmed later when they see the stars in the sky. What made me vote no for this is they're all young again, and then they all pull an Old Man's War, which is a John Scalzi book, where when a whole bunch of old people get new bodies, young new bodies, then they all ha keep having lots of sex. And so people are just having sex with each other. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I don't find this believable. You're in a new place, you all are experiencing amnesia after a certain point, and you decide to have sex with someone you don't know. I call bullshit. <laughs> so that was why I had said no. But, you know, my group voted yes, so I continued picking up from there. And right at the end of that 10 to 20 percent, we started to get more world building and more plot action going, which I was starting to find interesting. And that happened by one character, Amit, coming out of a lander, their, the ship that brought them where, to the location that they are in, and nobody has been able to get inside the ship except for robots, and they find him coming out. So. Why does he have access? What's going on? And then Sam admits that he can see control panels that light up, but he hasn't been able to access, like, they just show red when he tries to access them. So now it's been confirmed that they are on a different planet, but they don't know why. And that is the rest of the book, figuring out why are we here? And realizing there's more at play than what they thought. But because they don't remember things, they don't remember why they would be on this expedition crew. So starting off with a pro, Something I really liked was the flora and fauna of this world. The way it was described and how it interacted with the world and interacted with the characters themselves. There were some very interesting choices, but definitely worked with the plot as everything went along. And I have to say that I have a soft spot in my heart for the bungee bug, 
even if it wants to kill them. And it, you know, get, got the name Bungie Bug because it drops from the trees to grab them. It, it's a very cool concept. And you do meet the Bungie Bug in the first 10 to 20%. So not, not a spoiler on that one. But then also the discussion of how they, they're they on an alien world, they're not quite sure the full makeup, but then they know that the bodies that they have have been created for the world that they are on. And you get some interesting commentary of trying to learn how to survive in a situation that you don't know. It has them talking about you know trying to find water, trying to find food, testing the food to see if it is edible or is going to kill them. And I found all that very interesting. A con, I didn't like the military versus civilian setup where all these civilian scientists are wanting one thing and then all the military are wanting another one. And then they're fighting the whole time against one another. And it's basically broken. Everyone's broken up into two groups. So then when they vote for a leader, it's the civilian side who has one extra person to say, I want this person going with like the majority rules kind of aspect, which then doesn't work at all. <laughs> making it that way, it's making the military people as if they're just bloodthirsty and argumentative and only going to listen to somebody else who has a military background. And then also paints the civilians and the scientists as we have a nobler mission and we want to change the world, but not repeat the mistakes of humanity aspect. After all the science fiction books I've read, it is not an interesting dynamic to me anymore. Another pro is the plot. I really enjoyed the plot of this book, and really when you get into the meat of why they are there and how that happened, for the information that you did get, that was really interesting. That is what, at the end, was making me turn the page because I was looking for answers to the plot and to the questions that had been given in the plot. Another con are the characters themselves. You, you're following Sam, but I really never rooted for him, and everybody else felt like they were there for his convenience. When characters died and he was feeling sad about it, I didn't because they hadn't been developed enough for me to actually care about them. And when you think about it, they, they really are only known each other a day, two days. Like it, It's not a lot of time that is passing in this book. So there's no meaningful relationships being built or created. And I didn't feel like the deaths of the characters warranted the emotional response that Sam was giving. The payoff wasn't there for me. Another pro of this is the writing is very easy to read. And what I mean by that is... There, there are writing styles where, as you're reading, it's just very easy to, to flip the next page and keep going. And that's what Gibson has done here. His writing style is compelling. It keeps you reading in the book. And it's not throwing like big words and terminology at you. A con for me was the plot twist at the end. They started the plot twist, and I liked how they did it. And then when they went further, they have characters giving Sam information yeah, as they're twisting more. But at this point in the book, with everybody keeping secrets, it's like, are, is what they're saying really true? And we don't have Sam ever actually see it for himself. So he's only hearing what people are telling him. And that's where I was like, I felt like it wasn't an effective way to get to the end. I think they should have showed Sam the whole video instead of a snippet of what he saw. That way he would have had the emotional impact of that moment versus, oh hey, I'm gonna just tell you what this is and you have to believe me. No, no I don't. I as the reader don't anyway. And the last pro is this cover I think is one of the prettiest ones from my group. It's completely compelling, and whoever Gibson is having do his art, he should continue having them do his art, because this really does draw people to pick up the book in the first place. That is kind of like things I liked and didn't like about the book mini-review. For the things that 
were cons for me, if they're not going to be cons for you, then I would say pick up this book. So it's not a bad book. It's just middle of the road for me, which means that what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the book on and let somebody else read it and see what they think. If you have read this book, please let me know down below. And if you have any questions about the science fiction self-published contest, also leave those down below. Thank you and have a great day.